Okay, so uh, it's our great honor to have uh, Hao Fan here. So uh, Hao Fan is a research engineer at uh, Xiaohongshu, uh, working primarily on controllable and conventional content generation. So before that, he worked at uh, MMU, uh, Kuaishou. He also obtained a master's degree from uh, CMU in uh, 2020. So his featured works include Instant ID and uh, Score uh, Cam. So today, Hao Fan will share uh, his uh, wonderful work on Instant ID. Zero shots are uh, identity preserving generation in seconds. So let's welcome uh, Hafan. Okay, let's get started. Uh, thanks, Chen Yang, for inviting me here. Uh, and Happy New Year. This is my first time to be in Singapore, and I'm very happy to visit NTU. It's a very beautiful campus. Uh, before today's talk, I would like to do a simple survey. And how many of you have heard of our Instant ID? Before today's meeting, you can just raise your hand. Okay, very cool. And how many of you have already started our work? No? Okay. If you have if you have not do that, please do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's get started. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Hao Tan Wang. I'm a research engineer at Sha Hongshu. Before that, I obtained my master's degree from CMU in 2020. I'm also a member of the Instant X, uh, which is a non-profit research team. It's my great honor to be invited here to give out a talk to you. I believe some of you may have noticed that in the past several weeks, um, there was something that went on the top of the hugging face trading and uh, also become one of the GitHub trading repos. And yes, it is our Instant ID. <clears throat> About one month ago, we re released our technical reports and codes. There has been great attention from the community, and we greatly appreciate that the community supports and contribution to Instant ID, uh, which really helps to make it better and benefit more users. Uh, for example, we have deployed Instant ID on Hugging Face, Morscope, and OpenX Live. Uh, recently, one day for also supports acceleration of our instant ID on some NVIDIA GPUs. Moreover, the open source community also integrates the instant ID in ComfyUI and WebUI, which are the most popular user interface for stable diffusion. We have also gained favorable feedbacks from our real users that have experienced with our instant ID with their own images. Uh, I just feel very good to, to see that someone use our work and really enjoy it. Here are some results of our Instant ID from our users. Uh, they share their picture on Twitter uh, with our Instant ID. Uh, as you can see from the red box, we just send you know, Musk to the Mars and makes his dream come true. And we even made Yan Le Quinn a Marvel superhero copy of himself as a responding to his retweeting. Thanks to his post, uh, we gained a lot of attention from the international community. A very recent work from UCSB reviews that a significant increase in citation for papers endorsed by those influencers. Our case is confirms this again. And the, in the field of generation, uh, if you want your work to be known by more people, uh, the first step is to be retweeting by AK or by Yang Lu Kun. Yeah, AK is not a bot. Yeah, he's a real person. Yeah, he's ju he just sent me a message when he found our work is very interesting. To make our work, work results more credible, convincing, we also test our own faces. This is a team of Instant X. I'm in the third row. Since their priority may appear multiple times in the training data set, so it is very important to test with some non-celebrities. Yeah, here are some more results. I, I just generated some pictures for Professor Sui. And in the first row, the second row is, is from Professor Yang Yu from NUS. You guys just, just see the 
second column is a string festival dresses. Okay, so what is instant ID? As you have seen in previous slides, uh, giving a single base image, it can generate uh, ID preserving images uh, instantly without any test time fine tuning process. This work is done with my great colleagues, uh, Qi Xun Wang, Xu Bai, uh, Zhou Kunqing, and Anthony Chen. This would be today's outline. I would quick have a quick review of previous work in case some of some of you may not familiar with the task. Then I will show you how we came up with our idea, what is our modification, and how we design our methods. Uh, for next, I will show some potential application of our work, and last we will have a Q and A session. If you have any question, feel free to ask. <clears throat> First, let's have a quick re quick definition over personalization. So, what is personalization? It means that it means to adapt the model to a specific individual or object. In other words, it teaches the model a new concept. Previous personalization with diffusion model uh, can be grouped into two categories. Uh, based on whether, whether the test time fine tuning is required. For the fine tuning based methods, there are three leading choices. The first one is the uh, LoRa. Uh, LoRa adapts the models by applying low rank metrics to every attention layer in the diffusion model. And text inversion and dream booth both inverts uh, a visual concept into a specific text token. However, this method requires individual training for each new concept or new character, uh, which really limits their flexibility and their application to real world application. Uh, in contrast, there have been huge progress in tuning free methods recently. Uh, for example, uh, phase zero encodes the reference image into features into the clip space. Uh, just as the same as the text embedding, and uh, later overrides some of the text token, which are later used in cross attention layers of the diffusion models. Uh, PhotoMaker is also very popular recently, and uh, it is a concurrent work to our instant ID. Uh, it was it was. It was <coughs> It is also a great hit in these days, and it achieves the ID preserving generation by merging the visual feature from clip and the course class text feature as ID embeddings. But they lead to train the base model by taking a parameter efficient way to train a LoRa for the ULETs. In the inference process, uh, they need a trigger word to achieve the best results. However, this method uh, requires training the whole base model, I mean the ULET in diffusion model, which limits its their compatibility with other pre-trained base model in the community. Still, they do not achieve satisfying results. In base, uh, in our task, the Satisfying results means uh, the face should have high fidelity, high similarity to your giving image. And there is another work called IP Adapter, which is our most relevant work. It first used the clip encoder to extract the visual feature from the reference image. Later, it decomposes the global image embeddings by using a small trainable project, project, projection network to project them into the same dimension as the text embeddings. Then it introduces a decoupled cross attention layer for visual and text feature to perform attention calculating individually. In this way, it evolves, it evolves directly merging visual and text feature before attention layer which potentially missed some 
uh, image specific information that inventory leads to cross cross grained control controllable generation. So also we can see that the image do look you can see in the right side, you can see uh that the image do look alike to its reference but the result are still not so satisfying. Of course, uh, Apple Adapter also released a version of Face ID recently, and we will have a comparison with that work later. So we can have a simple review of how previous work encode adding embeddings. They fall into two categories, the clip-based and the face encoder based work. In Apple Adapter and PhotoMaker, they just use the popular clip model to extract the visual features. And in some more recent work, just like Face Zero and Face Studio, uh, they use a pre-trained face encoder to extract face features. To summarize, the by tuning based methods have the problem of high storage demands uh, also require a time consuming fine tuning process and the need for multiple reference images for each individual character. And the for the tuning free methods, which mostly extract visual feature with specific visual encoder and then embedding it into the diffusion process. But considering previous methods, we observe that the model uh, lose fine green control over extent token. Uh, it is very common because you can see if you give a uh, long prompts, long long text prompts, it is very hard for the model to uh, generate word concepts in your giving prompts. So we think that if we just concat the visual embedding with the text embedding was we'll just sum up the two different embedding, it is loud enough to achieve a fine grain or some uh some task just like uh we need the face to be generating high fidelity. Yeah. Uh, and more importantly, uh, no matter what methods they used, we found that the fidelity is not good enough with cross feature, just like clip embedding. So the problem leads to two questions. What kind of feature should we use as the added embedding? There are two choices by now. The first one is the course aligned clip embedding, uh, which is very common adopted in previous work. The second one is pro pro proposed recently, and it is a task specific face embedding, just like a uh, recent proposed uh, IP adapter face ID version and face zero and face data and ads. The second question is how can we effectively insert the add embedding into the diffusion model? How can we use the add information to get the generates process? Here's some way has been adopted by previous work. For, for example, we can just concat or add the add embedding well with the text embedding. This is done in face zero. Uh, like other work, like Apple Adapter and Face Studio, uh, they insert the add embedding into the cross attention layer, just similar to the text as a, a larger condition. <clears throat> but is that enough? We found that all these methods lack the ability to achieve high fidelity. One possible reason is that cross attention layer only provides cross aligned information. So in our work, we propose another way to insert an embedding into the diffusion process, and we found it is simple but effective. Uh, here is the over overall pipeline of our work. We summarize our design into three core modules. The first one is the uh, adding embedding. The second one is the uh, image adapter. The third one is the, the most important one is the uh, identity lights. Okay. 
In the first design, we are going to talk about the choice of visual encoder to extract identity, identity information. In most of previous work of personalization, they just use the visual encoder from Clip. But the fact is that Clip is trained in with a weakly aligned image text pair. Uh, <clears throat> and the generated image feature are just cross aligned to the text. So me meaning that its encoder feature only capture the broad ambiguous semantic information like composition, uh, style, or colors. Such in, such features uh, could could fail short for the task of, of human ID preserving. Fortunately, we found that face recalculation and uh, verification is a very is a well developed research area, and there are many off the shelf face encoder that could provide a feature that are rich in semantics and the fidelity. However, the, its use in diffusion model are still underexploited. In our work, we use a pre-trained face encoder to detect and extract the face ID embeddings from the given reference face image. And next would be the critical question. How do we effectively inject the identity features into the diffusion process. And we will answer it in the following slides. It's our second design. We adopted a strategy similar to IP adapter by introducing the decoupled cross attention layer that interacts with visual and texture token individually. You can see that we, uh, the blue one is the original the diffusion model, and the red one is the newly introduced uh, attention layer. But as opposed to cross aligned clip embedding, unlike IP Adapt, we replace the clip embedding with our uh, face embedding here. But we found that it is not enough to just use a similar strategy as every adapter, because if we, if we just only have the decoupled, decoupled attention layer, if we want to uh, increase the similarity or the face fidelity, we have to increase the weight for this embedding. And however, if we directly increase the weight for our face embedding, it will have impaired the text controllability of from the text side. So to solve this problem, we need some other way to supplement supplement the embedding process. <clears throat> this is our core design. We adopted the control light variant as our alternative feature embedding methods. This method uh, adopts a hyperlight work that are partly copied from the pressure and diffusion model. And the output feature of control lights are jointly back to the diffusion model in a residual way. Control lights uh, originally use uh, special information like depth map, human key points as input for conditioning, and includes the text as conditioning in the cross attention layer. But such design, the output of control light would straightly follow its special and text conditions. So in our adaption of control lights, there are many two modifications. First, instead of using the, let's see from this image, instead of using the open post facial key points that converts the whole face, we only use five facial key points. <clears throat> two for eyes, uh, one for nose, and two for mouse. We made such adaptation for two reasons. First, we train on real-world human images, not manually cropped image that contain only face. In such real-world image data sets, the face are often uh, 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 just a middle part of the whole image. So if we want to detect the 
open pose facial key points, we will miss a lot of images. <clears throat> Making the detection for the full full of its key point extremely difficult. And second, as we know that the output of control light follows straightly to the spatial conditions, we want to reduce the impact of spatial constraint and prevent over emphasis on redundant facial informations like face shape or mouth shape. <clears throat> and this can help us maintain prom prompt at editability if we want to generate uh, image open mouth or closed mouth with uh, with only five facial key points, it we have enough freedom to control the face facial expression. <clears throat> Moreover, what we also found that without any spatial constraint, we for example, we just, we, just, we don't give the five facial key points, we give a black image without any spatial control, we found that <clears throat> the model has a ex excessive unconstrained generate, generative space, which brings open unsatisfactory results. So it is just a trade-off why we choose the five facial key points as our condition here. <clears throat> Next, instead of providing the text embedding to the cost attention layer in the control lights, we inject our pre extracted face embedding for the ladder work, which making the ladder work to focus on many on ID relevant representatives, but not influenced by the general text description. So this is how we design our three core modules during training. Only the parameters of the project's layer of ID embeddings, the image adapter, and the identity light are optimized. And the pre-trained diffusion model are kept frozen in the training process. This also makes us compatible with other models that is based on the same pre-trained diffusion model. We train our instant ID on line phase data sites with additional uh, human images collected from the internet. In the following slide, I will show you more results of our instant ID and its comparison with other stable state-of-the-art personalization methods. Here are some results showing our robust list. For example, we giving the empty prompts. We only the wall, the whole generative process is guided by uh, the image embedding, the ID embedding. And our editability by giving some different prompts. We can, for example, we can change the color of the hair by only change the text. And our compatibility by combining our instant ID with other pre-trained control ID model, such as the uh, Kenny and Debs. Our method also support multiple reference images inputs. We observe that with one more reference, the generated image is richer in details. For example, you can see in the second row, the Taylor Swift. The last one is more rich in the facial details. But even with one single reference images, we are already able to get high fidelity results. So yeah, the result is also good enough in many cases. Here is a comparison result with other state of the art zero shot personalization methods like IP Adapter and recently popular photo makers. This is a larger one. <clears throat> uh -oh. We achieve high fidelity results while integrating seamlessly with the style. For instance, look at the fourth row where the family is. Where also the IP adapter face ID version 
uh, looks exactly like a laser pipili. It does not look much like a, a oil painting. And uh, what's the result from PhotoMaker this in the fifth row? The fidelity is not very good, but but the person real blended into the style. In comparison, our work work works best considering fidelity and the style integration ability. Here are some results comparison with other personalization techniques. For example, the LoRa, we downloaded two character LoRa from the Sabeta website. They are pre-trained LoRa, character LoRa from Jackie Chan. And you can see that with only one reference image here, we can generate the Jackie Chan in high fidelity, more flexible, even better than some LoRa's. And we also support multi-view synthesize uh, when we change the inputs for control lights. I mean, the, we can change uh, different uh, facial key points. We can get some high fidelity human photos in various face angles. Uh, like previous work, we can also do uh, the identity interpolation between two different identity and get some interesting results. In real world application, uh, for example, a couple may want to predict what that baby looks like in the future. So they can use their photo to do that. Even with animals for some non human images, Starting from a, starting from an animal, we just increase the stress of a reference face image, and we can get some really funny results. We are also able to generate photos that has multiple person, multiple persons that keeps its individual identity with regional control. In this example, we just uh, insert individual identity into different uh, regions of the images. Finally, we can do face swapping with our instant ID. The results are competitive with other popular face swapping tools. We use the most popular uh, in-swapper, uh, which is used in Roop or React, some very popular tools in changing face. Our results affirm uh, that the robust list and compatibility of our instant ID alongside its ability to preserving the text editing compatibility of the origin model. Uh, it is also plug and play. Uh, which allows integration with other models such as LoRa and ControlX. <clears throat> uh, recently, we also co-organizing with a Spring Festival event with Hugging Face on Xiaohongshu platform. If it is a Chinese social media platform, if you are using Xiaohongshu, you can join the events. You can just post your image with a Spring Festival dress and uh, we and win our official gifts. We have prepared a lot of gifts. So yeah, you can scan the QR code to join the events. <laughs> now we have one more thing. It is our first time to introduce this new work in publicly. As you may know that face attribution has strong sem semantic information and we can directly adopt a well-trained face encoder to extract ID embeddings. But how about general objects? Uh, for example, I have a cat 
I want to put it into 3D world or watercolor world. Can we extend our, the framework of our instant ID to any objects? The answer is yes. And here is one of our ongoing projects. We call it instant anything. As you can see in this picture, uh, with only one reference object image instead of a human face image, we can put it in any style, any position, any size, and do the uh, object interpolation between two different objects, just like we have shown in Instant ID. I wouldn't release more detail today, but we will update more details on our project page later. Well, this would be all for today's talk. Thanks for listening. And now it's the Q&A session. If you want to discuss more with us, you can join our discussion, discussion group uh, by scanning the WeChat QR code. Or you can also email me directly. I check my email box every day. Yeah, thank you. Okay, bye-bye for the talk.